uh, we met in Russia and in Ukraine, uh, and uh, at the occasion uh, we uh, reviewed opportunities uh, for another meeting in the Normandy format to um, try to arrive at uh, agreements uh, providing a framework for the resolution of the crisis. After several attempts, we decided to meet in Minsk uh, in early February 2015. Uh, and, uh, uh, there were major challenges here for the parties concerned. At Minsk, um, Mr. Putin was playing for time. The separatists, uh, supported by the Russians, even as uh, they denied their presence uh, there, uh, they uh, were seeking to gain as much uh, territory as they could. And uh, they were uh, seeking to be recognized by the international community as a, um, as a subject, as an entity in its rights. Uh, uh, following the decisions of 2014 uh, on the part of Russia to annex uh, the Crimea. Uh, uh, another intention on the part of Putin was to, uh, to uh, gain a permanent foothold uh, for the uh, control or for influence at least um, over Ukraine. So, as soon as possible, uh, trying to avoid uh, human losses, uh, casualties. Uh, uh, there was also the quest uh, to arrive at a ceasefire again and uh, also to uh, establish a permanent uh, border. So for uh, President Poroshenko, there was, uh, th on the other hand, the uh, effort uh, to seek support of the European powers to assure uh, a European perspective for Ukraine and uh, to defend its borders. So intentions were to assure on the part of Germany, in turn, to maintain relations uh, with uh, Russia and uh, to use them to prevent um, conflict um, at the expense of um, economic and political relations, uh, maintaining at the same time uh, good relations with France. For France, uh, which was interested in an Eastern partnership, which had already several times shown its interest uh, in the east of Europe, uh, gaining stability and uh, security of a um, uh, stable nature. And for us, the neighborhood uh, of Europe, not only, not only with the south, uh, with its historical roots, but we were also keen about uh, uh, relations with the east of Europe. Arriving in Minsk, we didn't know whether we were going to achieve the agreement. So, from the from the that point of view, we weren't sure, and we spent the entire night negotiating. And I think that uh, for Putin, that was not a problem. Spending the whole night, uh, I I thought at the same time that for him. Uh, it was uh, th his reason was to uh, get the negotiators fatigued and to gain time to uh, show his uh, interest in the negotiations. He did not want to interrupt them. For uh, President Poroshenko, it was vital to uh, leave the room with an agreement, given what the situation was uh, in field. Uh, we knew that uh, writing the uh, agreement over the night and then when the morning came, uh, we uh, had found 
the different points that uh, allowed us to reach a consensus. Uh, don't, uh, so the retrieving the army, reviewing the constitution, local elections in the, in the framework of the Ukrainian law, and then uh, at the end of the process, a comeback to uh, the control of, uh, of the border. So we thought at the time to, that we were able to announce the uh, agreement, and Putin uh, had announced that uh, separatists were involved. In any case, he thought he uh, was able to now give his opinion. No, the discussions were suspended. I don't know where the se separatists were at the time, whether they were in a room next door or in a different hotel. Uh, they le they uh, stayed at home. Still, uh, one or two hours later, uh, we were told that the separatists did not accept the agreement. Donc, me and um, Ms. Merkel started discussing uh, with President Putin, uh, who said that he could, wasn't able to uh, exert pression, uh, pressure on the separatists. We uh, were not sure whether um, he was actually telling the truth or not at the time. And after two hours, uh, uh, of discussing the issue with President Putin, uh, he was able to join the separatists that he said he hadn't known and then uh, imposed the restrictions on the agreement. At Don so at uh, 10 a.m. we returned and we were able to establish the balance of the negotiations. The advantage uh, that he had was that he was able to get to that situation. Still, this was organized so that the intervention of Putin could take place as late as possible, which allowed him to conquer yet another city, which was his goal and that of the separatists. Still, the ceasefire 48 hours later was announced officially, and it was largely observed in the following days, and that was the first achievement of the Minsk Agreement. Further on, a process continued that was going to be implemented, which was a sort of a road map that was not fully observed. Still, it constituted a certain framework. Now, let me move on to the evaluation of the situation in the current reality. A uh, number of meetings were held in the Norman Normandy framework after Minsk. There were three of them, uh, namely, and they all confirmed what this roadmap should look like and how it should be implemented. We um, know the obstacles. So the exchange of prisoners was not fully completed. There were still armed forces and militia. The local elections were not carried out according to the Ukrainian law as was promised and the constitution was not reviewed and uh, amended. But the roadmap uh, <coughs> allows us to address uh, the President of Russia and to uh, request its implementation. So if you look at the balance of uh, the loss of human lives that was reduced uh, at least sixfold in 2017 compared to uh, the time of uh, taking those actions, there was a number of meetings that were held which made it possible to regulate certain um, cases. Um, also, uh, hard um, weapons were withdrawn. So the ba balance is not completely negative. However, it is not fully positive either, to say it uh, bluntly. And there are certain frameworks that uh, will continue over the uh, following months.